Natural disasters are major negative events that are caused by natural processes on Earth. Examples of natural disasters include floods, earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, and hurricanes. There are plenty of categories that we can use to distinguish natural disasters, but here are the fundamental three. Geological disasters, such as earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and landslides. Hydrological disasters involve water processes, such as floods and tsunamis. Meteorological disasters occur as a result of processes in the atmosphere. These include hurricanes and tornadoes. These basic categorizations, however, have been blurred in recent years with the growing threat of climate change. In this way, the definition of what is a natural disaster and a man-made disaster in geography is less clear than it has been previously. Let's take a look at some geological natural disasters, avalanches and landslides. This is when material runs down a slope of some kind. In the case of an avalanche, this will be snow that has either built up in a vulnerable position or fallen because of sudden warm climate that has weakened the structure of the ice underneath. It's the same principle for landslides, which tend to occur because of weakened material on mountain sides. This can be because of rain or excavation. Earthquakes. When the Earth's crust moves and two plates either converge or shift over one another, a huge amount of energy is released. An earthquake is a result of that energy transferring into seismic waves, which move everything around it. Depending on where the epicenter, the point directly above the collision is, often determines the consequences. Earthquakes themselves are typically not the reason for the damage, but secondary events such as tsunamis, building collapses, and even volcanic eruptions are hugely disastrous. Volcanic eruptions. As mentioned, volcanic eruptions are also a result of the energy that is generated by the movement of tectonic plates. When the Earth's crust generates this energy, some of this travels in the form of heat. Under the Earth's surface, it becomes hot enough for the rock to melt and become magma. This molten rock is lighter than the surrounding rock, so it starts travelling to the surface, where it eventually explodes out in the form of a volcano. The molten lava, however, is often not the primary concern. The extremely hot gases and clumps of rock that take flight to create a deadly pyroclastic flow. The speed with which this travels is typically how the disastrous effects are caused. Now let's look at some hydrological natural disasters. Floods. Floods can be caused for a number of reasons and are not always disasters, therefore making the definition of this natural disaster hard to establish in geography. Floods are an influx of water in an area that is typically dry and is inhabited by humans, such as a city, town or village. This may be caused by unprecedented levels of rain that either flood valleys or burst boundaries where water is ordinarily contained. It can also be caused by the sudden melting of glaciers where water travels from higher latitudes to lower ground. Sometimes floods are welcomed, especially in natural or rural landscapes, because they can enrich the soil. Tsunamis. This kind of natural disaster is the earthquake's seismic waves having a repercussion on the water. Tsunamis are often far more devastating than earthquakes, in that the waves can travel as far as 16 kilometres on land after reaching the coast. And tsunamis do not consist solely of one wave, they usually possess a wave train where four or five waves may occur after the initial wave hits. There can be up to 100 miles between a seismic wave, meaning the subsequent waves can arrive anywhere between five minutes and two hours later. Finally, let's check out meteorological natural disasters. Cyclones and hurricanes. These names are used interchangeably, depending on which sea or ocean the event is taking place. Fundamentally, a hurricane occurs when warm, moist air begins to rise over the water. When this process continues, large swathes of heavy clouds, a storm, start to swell. This is because of the Earth's Coriolis effect, which dictates that anything suspended in motion over long distances starts to detour from a straight line. When a cyclone reaches land, it can be dangerous because it inflicts extreme winds, rainfall and flooding that can have detrimental effects on the area. Heat waves and droughts. These are significant periods of excessively hot weather, which can cause a number of issues, such as deaths from overheating, crop failure and wildfires. In hot areas of woodland, trees are often dried up by the sun, making them easily flammable and capable of spreading fire to neighbouring trees and buildings. Blizzards and hailstorms. This is when high winds stir up snow that has already fallen, obstructing travel, medical care and agriculture, sometimes precipitation, or rain, will freeze while in very cold conditions and remains frozen after hitting the ground. This is called hail. 
Natural disasters can cause major disruptions to buildings, environments and people's lives. For this reason, major natural disasters are heavily reported in the news. Nowadays, the technology for monitoring natural disasters is what allows us to minimise the impact they have. With more time, more safety precautions can be taken. Check out Twinkle's resources on natural disasters to learn more and find out about a few of the recent natural disasters that have been covered by our very own Twinkle Newsroom. Thanks for watching.